Welcome to the castle everybody. This is Nightsaber Z42 and this is Character Vault where we build a character using different systems and it's more of a tutorial style video. As you can plainly see, our system of choice today is the Alien RPG by Free League Publishing. So let's get on into it. Now before we actually get started, there's one thing that you're going to need. If you are doing the whole cinematic style of play, then you're going to need a actual character. There's no building of the character required in cinematic play. You're actually given a pre-made character and it's got their bio, their agendas, and all of their stats. Everything that you actually need to know will be listed on that character sheet. This one is from Destroyer of Worlds, which is a great book that's going to get its own review later. So for now, we will actually use the campaign character sheet. So in campaign play, each player builds their own character and you actually record it on this character sheet. This is the printer friendly version of the character sheet. So that's why it's all white, but the actual one in the book is like black, with stars in the background and it's like really cool but that would totally kill my printer's ink so we're gonna use that one now I really do like this chapter for a number of reasons first off it they do explain right off the bat what cinematic play is and what campaign play is and if you do opt to go to the campaign play route it does go through all of the steps for character creation at the very beginning of the book and it actually explains those concepts before you get into picking your class and stuff like that. So there are about 10 steps here for character creation. Some of them are very short like rolling for cash. So let's get right into it. So I have my character sheet right here. And I like to start with the personal stuff first, mainly because I already have an idea of what I want to create. And so for the name, I don't have a specific name, but his, uh, his nickname will be Moses. And we're actually going to be an officer. And I'll showcase all of the different careers here in just a second. Other than that, let's take a look and see what we have. So careers. There's quite a number to choose from in the core rulebook. Now, if you get the Colonial Marines book, there are actually more careers specific to that setting, which is a military style campaign. All right, so for your careers, you have options like the Colonial Marine. Okay, if you want to be the big badass soldier, this will probably be what you want to go with. You have the Colonial Marshal. Still kind of along the Colonial Marine side a little bit. These are the people that kind of take care of the colonies in the, on, on the different planets. You have a company agent. There always seems to be a company agent for some reason. And their job is to basically get the best interests of the company in order. You can play as a kid, but in my campaign, nope, for reasons. Medic, because every every group needs a dedicated healer, unless you get one-shotted, which pretty much every creature in this book can actually one-shot you, so then what's the point? The Officer, which is what we're going to be. This is kind of like your Ellen Ripley-style character, and I'll go over the key attributes and skills here when we get back to it. You can become a pilot, so along the same range as the colonial marine uh, you could be a pilot of course you don't have to be a colonial marine to be a pilot especially if you're doing like a trucker style play or even a, col a colony style play you're gonna have people that can need to drive those ships or even ground vehicles from place to place you have the roughneck so these are like your manual laborers on the frontier and the scientists so these guys they're kind of like company people, but not all the time. I mean, their whole shtick is that they're really smart. <laughs> That's pretty much it. So going back to the officer, there's a couple of key things that we have. So our key attribute is empathy. 
This is kind of like the charisma skill in the game. And our key skills are ranged combat, command, and manipulation. So again, we're kind of taking upon the leadership kind of role here. And we get to choose one of three talents to start off with, which are Field Commander, Influence, and Pull Rank, which we could read about in Chapter 4 here later. I kind of really find it funny that they have typical names, because we're all human in this game, so that just kind of is mute, in a way. So anyways, we are the Officer. So next we get to decide what our attributes are. So for attributes, we actually have 14 points across to spread out for all of our attributes. And if we take a look at the character sheet here, our attributes are strength, wits, empathy, and agility. And surrounding those four attributes are your skills, which we'll get into in just a second. So for our attributes, our key attribute is empathy, and we can only go up to rank five. So we can go up to rank five for our key attribute, which is empathy which is what we're going to do. Uh, so that means that we get about nine more points to spread out with. Now I could do three, 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 but that would probably not be so good. I would like a little bit more combat capabilities, especially since we have ranged combat. So maybe our agility is four, our strength is three, and then our wits could be two. So we're taking a point away from that. Of course, you are free to spread them out however you want, and that equals 14, so pretty good. So we have an empathy of five, an agility of four, a strength of three, and wits of two. That's all right. I can live with that. Next, we have skills. So for our skills, we have 10 points to allocate towards all of the skills. So each of the skills has an attribute associated with it. So for empathy, we have things like medical aid, manipulation, command. For agility, we have things like piloting, mobility, which is pretty much like your uh, acrobatics type thing and ranged combat. For strength, we have heavy machinery, close combat, and stamina. And for wits, we have observation, survival, and comm tech. So we get 10 points to distribute to any of those or to all around all of those skills. Now we can only distribute a maximum of three points for your key skills, which for the officer happens to be ranged combat, command, and manipulation. And we can only deal one attribute for any skill that's not our key skill. So we could be very focused on our officer here and get three points in all of range combat, command, and manipulation. And then we would have one point for something of our choosing. And I think that's probably a good something that we're going to do. Mainly because I don't know what my teammate's composition is going to be, but we're the leader, so we really need to be good at commanding and being a leader. So command and manipulation are each getting three points. For ranged combat, I am fine with taking a two and getting one point in something else. So for ranged combat, that's gonna be our two, which means we have two points to distribute to two other skills. I definitely want some observation, so we're gonna stick a point in observation, and we're going to stick one point in medical aid, you know, because we at least have some basic practice, some basic knowledge of how to fix people up. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's something good to have, even if we have a dedicated healer, because that person's probably gonna, you know, die. <laughs> Let's be honest. So there we go. Our skills have been set. Now we get to choose a talent. So for the officer, we have three talents to choose from and we can only choose one. We have Field Commander, Influence, and Pull Rank. So if we go to chapter four in the actual book, 
we can get a list of all of the talents uh, that are actually organized by your career, which is actually really cool. I really dig that. So let's take a look at the officer. So for the officer talents, we have field commander. You can use command to give orders in combat as a fast action instead of a slow action. This in effect means that you can give orders twice in the same round. We have influence. With rank comes certain privileges. Being obeyed is one of them. You can push any skill roll based on empathy twice, not just once like other characters. Each push increases your stress level by one. We have pull rank. You can use your command skill to order other non-officer PCs and NPCs around as long as they belong to the same organization as you. To force someone to follow your orders and perform a specific action, roll command against the target's manipulation. If successful, the target must follow your order, even if it means harm or danger to themselves. Your stress level increases by one each time you do this. Note also that each roll only covers one specific action. You cannot stop actions triggered by panic rolls using this talent. So because I don't know exactly what my party composition is going to be like, I'm actually not going to take pull rank. But as a GM, if I had sat down with my players and said, okay, you all belong to like Wayland Yutani, and you're just going to be truckers going around from place to place dealing jobs and stuff, then yeah, I would probably take pull rank mainly because for the NPCs that we might meet along that might belong to our organization, as long as we're actually at above rank. But for now, I'm going to take Field Commander because being able to use command to give orders in combat, not just once, but twice, actually seems like a pretty good idea. Influence also seems pretty interesting, but each of the other careers have an ability where you can basically roll your key skill twice instead of once. It's called pushing the roll. Next, we have our derived stats. So for those stats, we only really have two, stress and health. Stress will probably start with a stress of zero, but that is definitely going to increase over time. As we play, we're always going to be accumulating some sort of stress, which means that we actually get to roll more dice. In fact, if you have the alien dice, these yellow ones are actually the stress dice. And if you get a one, well, it's bad news bears. So it means that you actually get to increase your dice pool depending on your stress level. Our health is actually going to be equal to our strength, which seems really low, but if you have armor, it'll actually help out a lot. Our health is actually going to be three. And I'm actually just going to write that number here so I can be reminded of it. So we have three health total. Now we get into the personal stuff. So your personal stuff is going to be things like your name, your appearance, and your personal agenda, as well as your buddy and rivals. And I've already given our dude a name. His nickname is going to be Moses. His appearance, he's going to be male. Mm, I'm going to say like maybe Middle Eastern, but he's definitely going to be up in his 40s, maybe 44. He's older. He's definitely got some sort of experience going on there. Uh, other than that, looks will be reserved for the token when I create him. So we get into the personal agenda. Now, if you're doing the whole cinematic play, the, your personal agenda is already set depending on what your what game you're playing, whether it's the Story of Worlds or Chariot of the Gods or the new one that's coming out later next year or something like that. For a campaign though, you kind of get some freedom as to choose your personal agenda. Now, in the actual list for the officer, there are some suggestions for your personal agenda. So we can choose from the options below or decide for ourselves. You come from an officer family. You need to gain promotion or an award soon for some reason. It's up to you. You messed up in the past. Avoid taking blame for any more mission screw-ups. Or mistakes are deadly, so don't let anyone under your watch screw up. Make sure they understand why. And I actually kind of like the sound of that last one, so we're definitely going to write that in there. We don't like mistakes. We're a, we're a pretty hard officer on our crew. 
So I like that idea of having a hard officer. So our personal agenda, no mistakes. We do get to choose a buddy and a rival. So going back to our book here, the alien role-playing game is about a small group of people facing unknown and horrifying dangers in the cold darkness of space. To survive, you need to find someone to trust, but also be careful who you turn your back to. So we get to choose one buddy and one rival amongst the other PCs. Yes, they have to be PCs. So it definitely creates a lot of tension between rivals and also having that extra drama for your buddies. Your relationships are important for the GM as they can use them to create interesting situations in the game. So you choose one PC to be your buddy and another to be your rival. In cinematic scenarios, that is, of course, chosen for you. And because I don't know who I'm playing with, we will leave that empty for now. And next, we have our starting gear. Starting gear in cinematic play is already set for you. Obvious, everything is always set in cinematic play. But for campaign play, when you're creating a new character, you get some a little bit of leeway. Your career will determine what gear you choose from at the start of the game. And you do get some starting credits at the end of character creation. And so you will get to actually buy some stuff if you manage to find a station or some sort of a merchant or stuff like that. So let's go over to the officer page. So we get to choose two of the starting items below. We also get 2d6 times 100 in cash. So we get the M4A3 service pistol or the Rexham RXF M5 EVA pistol. I'm just probably going to go with the first, although details for equipment are on chapter 6. So you can look at the stats specifically for that if you would like to. But I'm going to go with that M4A3 pistol. Now each piece of gear takes one row on your character sheets. Some gear that are heavier will actually take two. Tiny gear technically I think takes like half of a row. So be wary of that because you definitely don't want to get encumbered in this game. Now that we're actually getting into our gear, the service pistol might be something backstory related. Maybe uh, Moses was actually once a part of some sort of a military force. Maybe not the United States Colonial Marine Corps, but maybe something else, something a little bit not as heavy. We get to choose between this Samani E-Series watch or binoculars. I do like my smart watches, so we will definitely take the watch. We get to choose between an M314 motion tracker or the IRC MK50 compression suit. Hmm, would I rather go to space or would I like to know where my enemies are? I think I'd rather go to space. We're going to get the compression suit. We get to choose between the Sikhs in PDAT or IFF transponder. We're going to go with the IFF transponder. And that is actually it for gear, although we do get to roll 2d6 times 100 and add that to our starting cash. And that's actually really all there is to creating a character in Alien RPG. So a couple of things to make note. You will have your weapon in your gear, but also don't forget to add its stats to the weapons category here. And I really do like this character sheet, even though if it kind of feels a little bit like flooded at times, but it does, it does pull your eyes towards certain details. So especially towards the center where all of your, your stats and your skills are. Um, down below you'll have your weapons and then around you'll have things like your talents and things that you need to know like your stress level and health. I do like that there are conditions written on here like starving, dehydrated, exhausted and freezing. And you will need to keep track of things like consumables like your food and water and air if the situation arises. So all in all, I am super excited that I managed to get my own copy of this book, and I highly recommend it. A review of the core rule book is coming probably next week. After that, we'll have the Colonial Marines book, and then we will do a review of Destroyer of Worlds. It's going to be a very alien-heavy month. So, feel free to leave a comment down below. Give this video a huge thumbs up to support the series, and subscribe if you would like to see more. I will see you guys in the next video.